Many baseball players, when asked why they play, will simply say they have a love for the game. One boy took this and ran with it, becoming one of the most influential men in baseball history. His name was Rube Foster. In honor of a man that hardly no one knows who he is or what he represented or anything else like that. And he's really the father of black baseball. Andrew Rube Foster was born on September 17, 1879 in Calvert, Texas to Sarah and Andrew Foster. Foster knew what he wanted to do with his life at a very young age. At age 18, he dropped out of school and joined a local black-owned baseball team called the Waco Yellow Jackets. While playing on this team, Foster flourished, building a reputation of excellence. Foster was praised for fielding and hitting among black and white fans, earning him a spot on the Chicago Union Giants, a top-ranked team of mostly African Americans. At this new level of success, however, Foster cracked and he fl fell into a slump. He was released by the team and signed to the Otesga Independence. Foster bounced around from team to team for a short period of time. Foster acquired his nickname, Rube, after defeating star Philadelphia Athletics left-hander Rube Waddell in a postseason exhibition game played sometime between 1902 and 1905. In 1907, Foster joined the Leland Giants, where he was named the playing manager. Under his leadership, the Lelands won 110 games and lost only 10. The following season, the Lelands tied for the National Championship Series with the Philadelphia Giants, each team winning three games. The team's cohesiveness continued for some time. Two years later, the winning days came to an end and the team lost the series against the Cubs. In 1910, Foster put together a team he would consider his finest, the Chicago American Giants. There was Art Superman Pennington, one of the American Giants stars of the 40s, an outfielder and first baseman who made two East-West All-Star Game appearances. It was great back there with the American Giants. Uh, i never seen so many people and then... Uh, Going to different towns, Kansas City was one of the best towns we'd go to, to with Satchel Page that would draw the money, you know. American Giants playing the Kansas City Monarchs, that was a big drawing card every time we met. When Fran, I come up to bat with Satchel, I, I told him, just like I tell them all, I was young and kind of goofy at the time, I said, throw it in doubt. And Satchel said, come on up, little boy, I was wearing kike pants then. And, uh, he said, come up, little boy, don't be afraid, come on up, little boy. And so that sucker struck me out three times. Uh, he put that big foot, he had what, about 14 shoe or 15. He put that big foot up in front of your face. And man, before you get it down, the ball will pass you. The American Giants claimed the Western Black Baseball Championship for the next four seasons. By 1915, the team had a rival, the Indianapolis ABCs, who beat the American Giants in a championship that same year. Rube went from pitching on the team to becoming a bench manager. As a manager and a team owner, Foster was high on discipline. He asserted control over every aspect of the game and set a high standard for personal conduct, appearance, and professionalism among his players. Foster developed a style that emphasized speed, bunting, place hitting, power pitching, and defense. He also con 
was considered a great teacher, which crafted other players into managers. In 1919, Foster had a hand in financing a team known as the Detroit Stars. Many of the players on this team went on to become managers. It is said by many that Foster was planning and building managers for future teams as part of a bigger plan. In 1920, the bigger plan became known. Rube, as well as owners of six other clubs, came together and created the National Negro League. Foster, as president, controlled league operations and still managed and owned the American Giants. This later became a problem for some teams who left to pursue another league. Some believe that Foster favored his own team when making certain decisions. Others felt that Foster was great at managing and owning. Many times he looked out for his team as well as other teams, even financially. In 1926, Foster suffered a major accident, which should have been fatal. However, his life was luckily spared. Over the years, Foster grew increasingly paranoid. He started carrying a revolver with him everywhere he went. Unfortunately, in his later years, Rube took a turn for the worst. He was institutionalized midway through the 1926 season at an asylum in, a, in Connor Kelly, Illinois, where he later passed away. Many call Rube Foster the father of baseball. I say this is true in the way that he built and prepared a baseball dynasty for black players.